Hey everybody, Young Grasshopper here. Welcome to episode two of my G40 tutorial series where I teach you how to play Axis and Allies 1940 Global 2nd Edition. And in this episode, we're going to talk all about the setup and the details involved in that process. Touched on it a little bit in the last video, but we're going to get right into it. Give you guys lots of tips and tricks on how to make that process less time consuming. If you remember in my last episode, I introduced these plastic piece trays. It's a customization. Now, customization just means anything that did not come in the box. And if it did come in the box, we call that out of box or OOB. You can also say the same about rules. So you can have out of box rules. You can have house rules or customized rules. So I'm going to introduce customizations like this. And everything that I introduce is basically just to improve your overall gameplay and just to make things easier. And one of the biggest things that interfere with our gaming days is just time spent looking for things. So these plastic piece trays are great for just compartmentalizing all your pieces so that you are not spending a lot of time looking for the unit to chip in and chip out and wasting a bunch of time during your turn. Now we're gonna get into setting up and I want to introduce now something called the order of play. Now there's lots of predetermined mechanics in this game, predetermined mechanics. And one of them is the setup. The setup is always predetermined, never changes. And the order of play is always predetermined, never changes. So we are going to get into the habit of doing things within the order of play. We're going to start with Germany and we're going to go to each nation as it is predetermined in the order of play. And we're going to get into just the habit of customizing ourselves with that order of play because it's very very important during a game so we're going to use these charts on the lids of the trays that came with the box and we're going to start setting up remember in the last episode i introduced every piece in every nation so we should be familiar what the pieces are and what color the nations are and we're going to start there with germany but first, in the next clip, I'm going to introduce a new customization that's going to help our gameplay. Be right back. All right, guys, I just got finished setting up Germany. Let's do a flyby and take a look. So I used the chart on the tray that came with the game here. Take a look to build this setup. Now, Germany is the first nation to go in each game round and, of course, to begin the game as well. I want to introduce to you a new customization for this episode. Take a look. So we need more chips and more dice. So this is what comes with the game. And if you remember my last episode, we did not really have many chips left over after the setup. And of course, these dice, although quality dice are just not enough in the game. Now, the reason why we need more of this stuff is because, again, we do not want to waste time looking for a chip, asking someone at the end of the table to pass us a dice or even rolling big battles two or three times because we just don't have enough. So we are going to remove the out of box pieces from the table and we're just going to add much more of everything. You can see I have lots of dice for everybody and you can go to your local game store and get all kinds of different dice and while you're there i recommend getting some small ones i'll show you later in the series what i use these for but there's no reason why we should be looking for or asking someone to pass us more dice or looking for chips um you can take a look at what came with the game here and you can see that we have much more now i'm not going with the greens which is the three remember i'm going with just 
singles and reds for five, but I have added some blues for 10. If there's large stacks defending a city or something, you can free up a couple reds and add a 10. Um, so this is more than enough. Everybody around my game table does not need to search for chips or chip out stacks just to free up chips. Okay, so this is relatively inexpensive stuff. Now, <clears throat> you can go to your local game store or I will put a link in the description box where I got mine. I got it from Historical Board Gaming, a great website for Axis and Allies accessories. All right, and again, get some small ones. I'll show you what I use them for in a later video. Now, I want to just show you another trick. I've laid out a couple of roundels here. Remember control markers? So I'm just going to put this here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to build up the line or the order of play sequence in front of us. There's no information on the board in these reference charts as per the order of play. And it's something that is constantly being referred to during the game, especially with new players that have not memorized it. So we want to build our sequence right here and leave it there the whole game. All right. And that's going to just help everybody refer to that and know who's coming up next and when their turn is. Next, I wanted to use this roundel. Take a look in the top left corner. That is the starting income. So the starting income for each nation is different and it's also predetermined. So that's what we call a starting income. And we're just gonna put a roundel right here on the income tracker for Germany. All right, we're gonna do that for each nation. Up next is the Soviet Union. Be right back. All right, everyone. Just got finished setting up Soviet Union or Russia. Let's take a look here. Show you a couple of details. Remember in my last video, I explained that the factory counter with the three is a minor industrial complex. The factory with the 10 is a major industrial complex. And the charts will show all that as well as the naval base and air bases in your setup chart. Okay, now let's go ahead and add to our order of place sequence. We're going to take a roundel and the Soviet Union always goes second in every game round after Germany. We're also going to take another roundel. Take a look in the top right corner, 28 IPCs starting income. We're going to add that to our income tracker, right like that. And now Japan is next, third in the order of play, Japan. Be right back. All right, guys, I use this chart, of course, to build the Japan setup. Let's take a look. We'll do a little flyby here. And we're starting to see some bigger, heavier units come out and hit the table. Aircraft carriers, battleships. Japan begins the game with a lot of aircraft, for sure. Now, before I move on, I want to go over a few details with the Japan setup. Take a look at these territories along the coast here. They've got a orangey kind of colorization, different than the green Chinese territories there. And different than the brown Russian territories up there, but we have something in this game called originally controlled territories and you can always know and determine who is the original controller by the emblem that's printed on the map. Now, this is an originally controlled territory of China. However, it's occupied by Japan to begin the game. Now, throughout the game, we clarify what's been occupied or taken away from the original controller using a control marker. Now you can go ahead and put control markers on all of these that have the Chinese emblem, not this. Korea is an originally controlled territory of Japan. We know that because of the emblem there printed, but this, 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 and all the way down here are originally controlled territories of China. Now the argument is, is that there's just not enough roundels in the game for Japan to do that. But during the game, if China comes in and takes back one of their territories, 
I've heard people say, just put a Chinese territory marker on it. But there's already a China marker there. It's their originally controlled territory. So once one of these is regained by China, either them or an ally, you want to go ahead and take roundels and put them on the territories at that point that Japan controls so that it's more clear, especially when some of them are being taken away. Next, we've got something called kamikaze tokens. Now, I'm going to explain kamikaze tokens in the future video. However, there's six, but... I'll tell you now that when kamikaze tokens have an opportunity to be used, more often than not, 99% of the time, Japan player is opting to use all of their tokens. Now, the tokens are here to help remind us whether or not they've used them. However, in a game, we always know when kamikaze tokens have been used or if they've been used. Now... As part of my setup, I just like to add them to the board. Maybe some of them are upside down. But there's six C zones in the game, C zones, that have a kamikaze marker. And right there. So six tokens for six C zones. It's never going to change. This is going to really help just let the eye pop, know where they are, especially for new players, right? You get uh, caught in a kamikaze zone unaware. Um, so six tokens in the game, you can spread them out like this as part of your setup. It's just an option, something I like to do, just make them pop out. Um, you can see how dark the convoy symbols are. I mentioned that in the last video as well. But that's something that you can do. It's a little trick. Also, too, you can see that I'm just spreading out some chips. If you're setting up the game alone, you can spread out some chips here so you're not reaching for the same spot all the time. I like to use uh, Mongolia and Saudi Arabia. So let's go ahead and put a Japanese roundel in our turn sequence, our order of play, that is. And 26 IPCs is our starting income for Japan. We're just gonna move the Russian sub and put that there. And we are done. Next up, America or the United States. We need both of these trays. They split them up. One came from the Europe board and one came from the Pacific board. We're gonna need both this chart and this chart. We'll use France later. Be right back. All right, we have finished setting up the United States. Let's do a quick flyby. We've got some units there in the Philippines and Pearl Harbor, of course, and off San Francisco. Notice our counters, the air bases and naval bases, especially on some islands like Midway and Wake. And all the way over here, we have some American setup on the Europe board. So. I'm just gonna go off a little bit and just say how much it sucks that the game I love is chopped up into two separate theater games. Now, I've been around this game for over a decade and I don't know anybody who plays just half this game, like just the Pacific game or just the Europe game. 99% of the players out there that own this are bringing it together to play global it's a million times more popular than just one of the theater games. And yet it's the theater games that get the attention and the global game, which is basically relegated to a few pages in the back of the rule book. And we have all kinds of little issues. Like, for example, we got the two charts, but we have to add the 35 starting IPCs that are given to them in Europe and the 17 starting income that is given to them in the Pacific. Add that up, we got 52. 52, but wait, it ends at 40 because we got two games here coming together to make one. We have to put this on the 12 
and call it 52. That's the kind of little, little paper cuts that hurt when you're trying to play a game that you love. Take a look here. Also, we got some major industrial complexes. I know for sure that those are minor industrial complexes before we start the game, but we're using the charts to build up the table first. And then we have to go to the global rules and find out how the setup that we just got finished doing changes. You'll see that there's no Russian units up there. They'll get added once we refer to the global rules in the back. We'll do that at the end of this episode, but let's move on. China is next, China. And that's China, guys. So very straightforward. The only thing I need to explain is when you're building your setup, you'll need to use an American fighter when it calls for one on the setup chart here. And also during the game, when you're eligible to use artillery or purchase artillery, you're gonna use the American artillery as well. We're building our order of play right like that. We're gonna take this other one and it says 12 IPCs is the starting income for China. We're gonna put that on the income tracker and done. Next, the United Kingdom. Very large, heavy setup. Be right back. Okay, United Kingdom is done. There's a lot of pieces on the board for them on both the Europe side and the Pacific side. They're gonna use tan pieces. Let's do a flyby, the tan pieces. You can see there in and around India. Also in Africa and the Mediterranean. Lots to set up here. And Canada, and of course in and around London. Now we have something in this game called a split economy and it works for the United Kingdom only. It's part of global rules, split economy. And what it essentially means is you're gonna have two stacks of income. If you're the UK player, you're going to have one stack for UK Europe with London as its capital. And you're gonna have another stack for UK Pacific with Calcutta as its capital. We're gonna get into that in a future video, but I have to introduce that to you now because we've got these roundels. We have these Union Jacks that are representing the UK Pacific and these here representing UK Europe. So we're going to lay these down and continue building our order of play. They're after China, but we're also gonna put down this here now it's the same player doing everything in the same turn we're just going to remind them to not forget to do the pacific side or especially collect their money which is the reason why we have the two roundels is the income so for the uk europe it says here 29 ipcs now that's going to change when we configure everything to global rules and the same thing with Russia there as well. We're gonna reconfigure that. And UK Pacific, 16 IPCs is also gonna change. But for now, we're just using the charts and we'll make those changes later. So the Union Jack representing the income of the UK Pacific there, right? So I also brought out one of the battle boards that came with the game. So two battle boards came with the games. I believe this is the largest one on the Europe, in the Europe game. And I brought that out and placed that there. This area of the board does not really get used during gameplay, so it's a good spot for it. And we put some of the setup pieces and this represents what is sitting in France and it'll be more obvious when we set up France. But for now, Italy is next. Italy, be right back. And Italy, so pretty straightforward. Everything on their chart is in and around the Mediterranean right here. Take a look though at their factories. You can see their capital is Rome and they have a minor industrial complex, whereas Northern Italy has a major industrial complex just make note of that but 
everything really right here, a little in Africa and some units down here. So let's add them to our order of play. They go every game round after the United Kingdom. And their starting income is 10 IPC. So IPC stands for industrial production credits or certificates. So it's just the money usage of the game. There we go, 10 IPCs for them. Next up is Anzac or Australia. We're gonna set them up and we're almost done. All right, we have Anzac. Pretty straightforward. Uh, most of their stuff is right here in and around Australia. There's an infantry over on Malaya. The only thing I'll say about uh, these guys, just be careful of the ship sculpts, the cruiser, destroyer, transport. They look very similar, so you'll have to pay attention to the details of each ship there when setting up. So let's go ahead and add them to our order of play sequence. They go right after Italy. And their starting income is 10 IPCs, the same as Italy. We're gonna put it right on top there. Now, I also took the liberty of setting up France. Now, take a look at the battle board here. All of that stuff is right here in Paris. Now, just a little setup trick. You don't want to fill this up just to move it later because remember, Germany goes first to begin every game. They're definitely going to come in and attack this. So why not just part of your setup, just fill it in. I actually got this wrong. This artillery was over here. I moved it in its proper spot. So that's all ready to go. Let's go ahead and add them to our order of play sequence. And they are the last nation to go and our order of play sequence right there on display for everybody during the game very important information now it says 17 ipcs here we're just going to go ahead and put 17 i know that's going to change france right there and that is the setup but remember we are playing global 1940 second edition so we have to configure this now to play those rules we use the boxes from the pacific theater game and the trays from the europe theater game they don't have all the information perfect for playing global we have to make a few changes i'll be right back and i'll show you what those changes are all right, everybody, we have our table set up. We use the charts that are on those lids that came with each of the games to set up the table, but we have to make a few changes because we're playing the global rules expansion. Now you can look in the back there of the rule books for that. I'm gonna go off my experience and just make those changes that I know need to be made. I have not set up the table using those charts in something like 13 years so that was a little bit of a flashback for me so i'm just going to make the changes if i'm wrong i'm wrong but of course refer to the rule books yourselves so we have major industrial complexes for the americans and we need to change those to minor industrial complexes and there's another one over here in San Francisco. So we're just gonna put these back and put a minor industrial complex there as per global rules. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some Russians to the Pacific side. Russia is mostly a European nation, so the Europe board had most of that but the setup here for global rules requires some infantry and I believe that's two AA guns right there if I'm wrong I'm wrong 
and also we have to change Egypt Anzac soldier we're gonna put that guy right there and so it's gonna be reduced to one UK soldier and two Anzac soldiers that's how that is now these incomes are a little bit wonky this should be 19 this should be 17 this should be 28 this should be 37 so russia 37 uk 28 that's right 19 that looks good so i believe that's it now those income changes come for various different reasons when you're playing the global rules east india now belongs to the calcutta money whereas western canada belongs now to the london money and of course there's an extra two here plus one somewhere else for france to get that to 19 so yeah so those are the changes if you were to use the setup for you new players that are playing this game for the first time if you were to use those charts just be aware playing the global rules refer to the pages in the back of the rule book and make those small changes and if i missed one or if i got one wrong i apologize but that's the gist of it all right so as far as starting the game we've got some chips here for players to get some chips here for players to get we've got our battle board all set up and ready for germany to do their turn one and we have our order of play sequence right there visible for everybody great reference information great way to use the roundels and that is the setup so we went through a lot of details and had to be done to show you guys because it's part of the game it takes about an hour 45 minutes if you're experienced and alone but an hour or more if you're not experienced and alone but you want the players to come around a table and help you set it up it's too long for one person but sometimes it's also fun to put on some music and just chill and set up the board look at the table but uh, also one last thing, in the rules, it explains player assignments. If you have three players, four players, five players, how to divide players amongst all the nations, all right? And of course, you have one side playing the Axis, one side playing the Allies. But if you get up to four or five players, rulebook wants to tell you how to divide up those players. It's not a hard rule. It's more like a suggestion in my opinion it's not a very good suggestion you want to split the players up based on skill experience you're not going to give the newest player germany to do it's the most difficult to play out of all of them it's one of the most fun but uh, japan's also a difficult one for a new player just want to use your common sense and if Everybody kind of wants to play the same nation. You could put your roundels in a hat and draw from a hat. But uh, anyways, do what's best for your own gaming group. And I will be back for episode three. That was episode two of my G40 tutorial series. We introduced a customization, more chips and more dice. You're definitely going to need them. The out-of-box materials is not enough to play a fluid game without wasting a lot of time looking for things. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers. May all your rolls be ones. And see you in the next vid.